On the road to Hroza, a village in eastern Ukraine, there is a cemetery. Among those laid to rest there are the 59 people who were killed last October in a single rocket strike. That day, a fifth of the population of Hroza died as they gathered to mourn a fallen soldier. There were screams, people were shouting, we screamed and cried, and then there was silence. They were instantly killed. The place is quiet except for the sound of an excavator clearing rubble from where a cafe once stood. As residents try to move on from the trauma, another fear lingers. Russian reoccupation. We'll just have to run away from here. Do you hear? They are shooting near Kupiansk. Kupiansk is located just 35 kilometers east. Russian forces have intensified their attacks there in recent months. And Hroza, which was occupied during the first year of the conflict, is again under threat. Of course I will flee. They will kill me right away because I am a military man. They'll just kill me right away. In other frontline towns, the same worry has taken hold, especially after the fall of Avdiivka to Russian forces. I'm here in Pokrovsk, which is about 45 kilometers northwest of Avdiivka, and the Ukrainian forces' recent retreat from there has triggered fears that Russia may now turn its sights to cities like Pokrovsk, which is a logistics hub for the Ukrainian army. Many soldiers and civilians have evacuated to this area. Larissa fled from Avdiivka to a town just outside of Pokrovsk. She finally escaped the city where she had lived all her life after a shell landed near her home, wounding her. But Larissa fears she may have to move again. Of course, of course, that is what I'm afraid of. Where else next? Should I go farther and farther? I don't want them to come here. As Ukraine enters its third year of conflict with Russia, people here in Pokrovsk, in Hroza, and other cities on the thousand-kilometer-long front line face the threat of occupation once more, just as they did two years ago.